You too can become a vocal master in seven minutes. Seven minutes? What? Let's talk about it. One, two, three, ABC, Robert Kennedy the third, RK3, that's me. No, it's not a test. We're rapping the intro, talking about success and bumping the status quo. <laughs> Listen, y'all, welcome back to the show. We've got another fun, value, doggone packed episode, and we want to get right to it today. As always, I want to let you know that our last guest was phenomenal. Quinn Conyers talked about how she has pitched for Shark Tank and other shows and how she's won pitch competitions. So hop back over to episode 13 so that you can win with Quinn. Okay, if you want to send a suggestion or a question to the show, you can also send it to me at podcast at robertkennedy3.com. That's podcast at robertkennedy3.com. Hey, listen, shh. Don't tell anybody. We're skipping some stuff and we're jumping right into the show. Today, my guest is Arthur Joseph, and he helps leaders find their voice. In some cases, literally, because it was lost. Seriously, his book, Vocal Leadership, Seven Minutes a Day to Communication Mastery, is chock full of secrets. And he's agreed to share some of them with you, with us today. So get ready. We're about to open up the book on communication. Arthur's got a story. Let's tell it. Arthur Samuel Joseph. He is the founder and chairman of the Vocal Awareness Institute. He is recognized as one of the world's foremost communication strategists. And he is a, a coach and he has coached a who's who of people, including Angelina Jolie, Sean Connery, Tony Robbins. Wow. Stephen Covey, Jerry Rice, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and many more. Arthur, how are you today? Well, I'm, if I was low in energy before getting on this call with you, I'm not anymore. So. <laughs> Great. Well, listen, I could, I'm glad I could contribute at least a little bit to your day, and I know you're going to contribute a whole lot to the listeners in the show today. So... I want to just jump right in here and get a little bit of a sense. So we were connected through your book here, Vocal Leadership. I want, to, I want you to tell me a little bit about the concept behind it. You have the seven-minute method to vocal mastery there. Tell, tell us a little bit about that book. Well, with my birthday in January of this year, again, my 54th year since creating Vocal Awareness. Wow. And for decades... I actually began figuring out what is what could we accomplish and how long would it take to really do an effective vocal warm up, whether it be for music, for business, whenever we want to claim our personal power, how long would it take? And seven minutes is what I hit on. Wow. And and one really can. We we warm up the voice. I have seven rituals in vocal awareness, and this is communication mastery. So mastery in any form is only achieved when you integrate mind, body, spirit. So the seven rituals are preceded by putting ourselves in stature. Mm. The body inhales. Our first of the seven rituals is to say thank you to God to source, if one is an atheist or an agnostic and they don't want to acknowledge that, one can merely take in a deep thank you and will achieve a similar result. The second ritual is to love and let go. I share those initially because the body's first impulse with each of those steps is to inhale. And it's the body's way of saying, thank you for giving me permission to be me. I breathe to acknowledge that. Wow. So in my latest book, it's the fifth book I've written, 
seven minutes a day to communication mastery, vocal leadership. And as you know from seeing the book, I'm honored that commissioner of the National Football League wrote the foreword because he's one of the most integral people I know. Wow. And as you, if anybody takes a look at my website, besides the handful of names that you mentioned, I have my 21st and 22nd students are going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year and wow. myriad others. And I've observed that every artist, every athlete is a master in their skill set. We know this. But before walking out to compete or perform, they have rituals and they never change. And those rituals always have a spiritual component. It's not just great biomechanics. So this is communication mastery. This is empowerment through voice. The principle is, I want us to own our voice, own our power. Not present who we are, rather be who we are. So we use the rituals and these spiritual principles to help us align ourselves each and every time we want to not present the best of who we are, but achieve what's truly possible in being who we are. Awesome. So you just mentioned athletes and the NFL and the rituals that they go through, and they're preparing to almost go out into the battlefield. It's like they're, they're gladiators almost, and they're warming up for something that is extraordinary, an extraordinary physical moment. Why is it that most people don't think the same way about their vocal or their communication experiences? Not most people. No one does. Wow. And you never, if not when you're, not when you're performing, when you perform, you warm up. Yeah. But if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, you wouldn't have exercised your voice beforehand. People simply do not think like that. And one of the reasons is voice is a really intimidating experience. For most of us. You know, I'll ask in the in the seminar in doing a keynote, I could have a thousand people there and ask, how many of you love your voices? And I might get a three or four hands, literally. Yeah. We know this. And sociologists tell us, Robert, that the greatest fear in society is public speaking. Now that's totally bogus. Right. But that is the bill of goods we've been fed for sixty plus years. The greatest fear are actually two fears. Fear of abandonment and ownership of my power. Wow. Claiming who I am without approbation, without asking permission to be me. We get all these mixed messages growing up. Oh, you shouldn't act like that. That sounds arrogant. Oh, don't say that. What will people think? That's the song and dance we're fed. Right. So if I say to you, Robert, Vocal awareness is extraordinary work. It can help you change your life in moments. No, that's stupid and arrogant. But if I say in response, Robert, vocal awareness is extraordinary work. It can help you change your life in moments. That's not arrogant. It's my truth. But it's learning how to claim that, learning how to be that. In the arts and athletics, once we've completed what it is we're there to accomplish, mm -hmm. we get to be normal again. We're just everyday folk. Right. But in vocal awareness, Robert, there is no off switch. Because this is empowerment through voices, I've already said. And what that means is, through the metaphor of this work, through the techniques of this work, we learn to give ourselves permission. and. This is a paradigm shift in communication because if you look at the TEDx talk I did last year, I spend 18 minutes in this talk teaching people how to go. Ah. Or a phrase, when I speak, I need to be aware. Right. Ah, hey, ah. Now, of course, that sounds ridiculous. I understand. But I'm warming up. And so when I'm done, then I have the ability to say, when I speak, I need to be aware. Right. 
I'm now in conscious awareness. I now have a technique to communicate, not in a way that you like me or you like me, but that I know is an integrity to the work I'm here to achieve. Right, right. Am I addressing your question, Robert? You you are. I, I want to take it a step further here. What is it that allows people to know that they need to even do this work? So if I look at an athlete like, let's say, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods plays his entire game and he may know that something is wrong. He knows that his swing is off. And so he says, I need to practice this or I need to get a new coach to do to help me do this. What is it about people that are maybe already successful in their chosen field, like athletes or other speakers, Tony Robbins, right, who's already a successful, what allows these people to say, oh, my goodness, I need to work with Arthur or I need to do some work on this part of my my being or my person? What a thoughtful question, Robert. It's a very complex question because people come to me for myriad reasons. One, they're sent. Mm -hmm. With athletes, one of the reasons is they want to be broadcasters and or they want to become spokespersons or do keynotes and this is earning power we draw conclusions about people superficially speaking by how they sound wow and perception reality and the perception perception is achieved in three seconds there is no warm-up time and so if i'm speaking to you in a way that cast aspersions on my how intelligent I really am or whatever, or allows you to continue some ill-perceived simplistic thought about this is who you think I am. I want to change that whole behavior. I don't want to make anyone into anyone they're not. I want to help bring out what's possible. One of, one of my corporate clients was sent to me a number of years ago because he tried out for partner and it's a very intense year and a half, two year grueling process to become partner in this particular global corporation. He failed. Wow. And normally you're let go right after that. You don't get a second chance, but I had trained his boss. And so his boss boss intervened and said, I want him to study with Arthur. Our entire relationship for several months was on Skype, except Mm. for the day before when I went to DC to train him in person for three or four hours before he was going to have his next sit down. He called me several weeks later. Not only did he not need to complete the next year and a half of this training, they made him partner within six weeks. Wow! Within six months, He literally brought that company a billion dollars of business. Wow. And so the point was, he had the substance, but he didn't know how to communicate it effectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I turned 73 years ago, one of my dear friends and former EVP in a global company gave me a book called The Audacity of Hoop. And it had a picture of President Obama on the cover in the Oval Office holding a basketball behind his back. And it was his life and presidency through the prism of three-on-three pickup basketball. We know how much he loves to play that sport. Right. And NBA clients of mine said, if you're playing full court three-on-three, you're intense. This is a serious competitive game communication motivation leadership and more you're listening to the rk3 show hey people while we have a little break i just wanted to remind you to head over to patreon.com forward slash the rk3 show to become a patron of the show Support the show and receive patron perks like getting a show shout out, free access to Speak Right Now Academy courses and your own segment on the show. Ooh, let's do it. Again, become a patron by heading over to patreon.com forward slash the RK3 show. That's patreon.com forward slash the RK3 show. I also want to remind you to check the show notes for a special offer from today's guest, Arthur Joseph. Now, let's get back to the show. And so John, in his note in the book today to me, said, 
Thank you for introducing me to the audacity of voice. Wow. And I said, John, to be audacious, we first have to believe in our own possibility. So what I'm teaching people is there's a running theme in my work called a champion does it differently. But it's not a sports-centric word. The root of the word champion literally means dazzlingly skilled in any field. Wow. The root of the word audacious means to bold, intrepid. These elite athletes, these renowned artists that I've had the privilege of knowing and teaching all these decades, they take that leap. They're willing to invest and risk. Mm. And then they have the skill sets based on years and years of training to fulfill their vision. The rest of us don't have that opportunity. We we go about our lives because speech is habit. We've never right. thought about any of these things. That's right. But I've turned this into performance art. And if we look up the word present or presentation, Robert, in the back of my book, it literally means to introduce formally, to bring before the public. We look up the word perform or performance, and it mm. literally means to carry out fulfill, to do. So vocal awareness is creating a, a scaffold for us to erect whom we truly choose to be and right. then develop through the technique of this work the skill sets to simply be that each and every time, everywhere we go, no off switch. Right. So reading between the lines a little bit, there's a line in your book that caught my eye where you said every public uh, encounter is a performance, right? Because and a lot someone of is watching or listening. Yeah, yeah. So what is it that uh, you spoke about the two first two steps earlier uh, about being stature. thankful and your stature? stature. Preparation, then uh -huh. thanking source, and then loving and letting go. Yeah. And the root of the word spirit, because one of the reasons that's so important, the root of the word spirit means to breathe. Mm -hmm. So the body's first impulse is to inhale. Ah. And the body's way of saying, thank you for giving me permission to be myself. Yeah. I breathe in acknowledgement. The Hebrew word neshama means both soul and breath. Wow. So this is the way we begin to connect intrapersonally with what I call in vocal awareness our deeper self. Right. So not everybody's seeing you on video here right now, but if, if I wanted to create even more power or more or exemplify more leadership with my voice. Okay. Time out. He's saying, tell me that again. And if I wanted to exemplify more power, more leadership with my voice, say yes. those words again, underline the word power, leadership, voice, and see a period. If I wanted to exemplify more power, okay, more he's, we're doing a coaching lesson here, folks. Let's go, we're Arthur. Going to breathe. It's okay. Going to be silent. We're going to allow a slow, silent, conscious, loving breath. Uh -huh. Silent. In five, four, three, deeper, deeper. And at the apex of that, say that same thought. If I wanted to exemplify more power, leadership and authority with my voice what was would it, i did you feel and hear that difference yeah there was a lot more control it felt like there was more presence it didn't feel as if i was pushing to get to the end of the sentence and you underlined some key words yeah because in all verbal communication only eight percent is language based yeah so we're not going to get all this stuff so by underlining leadership, maybe voice or exemplify, whatever, yeah. you're telling my unconscious mind, take this away. This is what I want you to remember. So I'm literally doing punctuation in my head with my voice. It's, it's the same concept as writing, but... I, you're a singer. We look at music and it tells us everything to do. 
Mm -hmm. how long, how loud, what pitch, everything. We look at words, they don't tell us anything. Right. So something that I make available to your listeners is this visual voice pro course. It's called Visceral Language. Wow. I teach us how to make voice visual. You just saw that word underlined, for example. Yes. It teaches us how to tell our story, communicate with feeling in a very visual way. If you, you're, you love sports, I gather. Yes, I do. So if you look at any of the Hall of Fame speeches I've written, LaDainian Tomlinson, for example, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, etc. They're all annotated in visceral language. Mm. I write them with them. I help them deliver them. And if you were able to see their Hall of Fame speeches, all annotated both in the prompter and in the hard copy on the podium. If you look at their speeches, there is a reason, for example, Ladanians went viral two years ago. Not just of what he said, because of what he said, but how. Because right. in vocal awareness I'm teaching, it's not just the message, Robert, it's the messenger. It's Excellent. the integrity of embodying the truth of how we want the world to know us. Wow. So, Arthur, I wish we could spend all day I with you. This is, this is amazing stuff, man. I, I want everybody to, number one, go to check out Vocal Leadership. Check out Vocal Leadership, Amazon. Where else can they connect with you and get more of the gold nuggets that you're sharing today? Well, my website is vocalawareness.com. And Excellent. I do answer all emails. My team forwards them to me. Mm -hmm. And also this offering that you'll be making available yep. is, is frankly a game changer. There is, my goal is not to make anybody into someone they're not but to help us all bring up what's possible. And my vision is to change the world through voice. I hope you got it. I hope you got every last bit of it. For some, you might not think it's critical to work on your speaking, but in seven minutes, you may be able to change the entire trajectory of your career or your business. Take the challenge. I dare you. Grab Arthur's book. The link is in the show notes. And then let me know what you thought by shooting me an email at podcast at robertkennedy3.com. That's podcast at robertkennedy3.com. Hey, have you subscribed to the show yet? Make sure you do. And don't forget to leave a review. Come on, folks. We need you to make this thing go. So don't forget to tell your people to go over to Apple Podcasts to leave a ranking, rating, and a review for the show. Also, listen on Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Pandora, and iHeartRadio. Feel free to leave some show love there, too. I won't rap. But we're wrapping this up. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Most of all, I hope you were compelled to jump out of your comfort zone and share your story. If I can be helpful to you with that process, let me know. Hop over to robertkennedy3.com and leave me a message. Hey, y'all, don't forget, everything that happens to you in life is your stuff. Your stuff is your story, and your story deserves a stage. I'm Robert Kennedy III, RK3, and you've been listening to... The